You're listening to Black Like Me with Dr. Alex G, a podcast that invites you to experience the world through the perspective of one black man, one conversation, one story, or even one rant at a time. Here's Dr. G. Hey, hello everyone. This is Alex G from Black Like Me with Dr. Alex G, and you are in store for another great episode. We just keep them coming around here. All right, so one night a few weeks ago, my wife was out of town with her with her mom. They were on a family visit, and I was watch, doing one of my favorite things to do. I love watching um, all the food channels and the food networks, and something captured my attention. There was a young woman, her name is Tamara Dyson, who was on Triple D, and she was there with, with Guy um, Fieri. And I'd never seen um, a vegan soul food restaurant. And so I was watching the show and so intrigued. And um, so I did a little research on her. So I found out that this entrepreneur is the owner and the president and the executive chef of a restaurant called Solely Vegan in Oakland, California. Um, although she worked for many years in, in the health career as a nurse, as a phlebotomist, uh, she threw caution to the wind. Um, and decided to create a healthy food industry or, or, or business. She grew up watching her elders cook. She was really inspired by both her, her mother and her grandfather, who taught her the importance of grit and hard work. One of her claims to fame is that she launched a business without having the, the capital that was, that was needed. Um, what I love about what's happening, what's happened with her is that she's just been recognized all over. Black Enterprises named her as one of its Entrepreneurs of the Month. USA Today named her restaurant as one of the top 10 soul restaurants in the country. She's also won very many local um, awards, such as the East Bay Express Readers Report uh, poll seven times and winning Best Vegan Restaurant Award five times in six years. We can go on and on and on. Um, you'll be able to go to my website, alexg.com, to get a link to her restaurant so you can stop by, tell your friends who live in the Bay Area to stop by. But I am really, really honored to um to have miss tamara dyson on my show this morning tamara welcome Ooh, i love that intro <laughs> thank you alex very it, happy oh, to be speaking with you yeah well, thank you so much sure well thank you i know you're up early getting ready for all that good food you're preparing so i know you're a couple hours behind but i'm so glad that uh-huh. you're here so let me tell you before we get into the interview tamara i got this thing that's called black ice breaker and um, you're in Oakland, uh-huh. so you don't know nothing about black ice. But it, when it gets cold out here, this this invisible <laughs> sheet of ice. But rather than just calling okay. it an icebreaker, because the show is black like me, I like to do a, a, a black a black icebreaker. So I just got a couple of questions just to help you relax. And um, um, so growing up, did you prefer sunflower uh-huh. seeds or pumpkin seeds as a kid? <laughs> I would have to say sunflower seeds. All right. Okay. Uh, uh-huh. co- collard greens or turnips? In terms Collard of your greens. favorite. Collard green. All right. Mustards or kale? Ooh. Kale. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay. When you grew <laughs> up, as you're growing up, did you refer to this particular dish as yams or sweet potatoes? Yams. You use yams. Okay. Hey, when mm-hmm. you grew up, did you refer to um to older <laughs> women or your aunts and your family as aunt, auntie, auntie, or auntie growing up? <laughs> <laughs> auntie. We auntie, would say auntie. Auntie, okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, is there a difference between hot sauces? Absolutely. Uh oh, okay. Which is your favorite? Uh actually, you know what? Well, Crystal is a historical favorite, but uh really? actually Frank's. I like I like Frank's too. Oh. I like Frank's hot sauce as well. Okay. Hey, while well, you're yeah. growing up, I don't know, you grew up in the oak you grew up out in the Bay Area, right? You grew up out there? I grew up in the Bay Area, yeah. Okay. So I don't know if this is a Midwest thing, but did you have relatives who put plastic on their furniture in the living room? <laughs> I did. <laughs> did they call it the front room or the living room? My, my grandma Irma. <laughs> the front room. The front room. <laughs> hey, I know your grandfather's one of um, your role models. Did he drink cold water yeah. out of a big mason jar? <laughs> You know what? You know what? I never saw my grandfather relax too much, so I, I actually can't answer that oh, question. I oh. just always seen him go and he was always working. So oh, my goodness. I, okay. I don't remember that All one. Right. That's a great question. Sure. I have to ask my mother about okay. that. And I got one more question for you. Who was your favorite female singer growing up? Mm, that's great. Uh, I would have to say hmm, there were so many. I love music. 
You could just pick. You could um, pick maybe just one. It was one Whitney of your Houston. favorites. Whitney Houston. Whitney, Whitney Houston. Oh, yeah, that's Whitney a good Houston. Show. I really liked her. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hey, thank you for doing. It. I do that with every guest. It just has a way of breaking the ice uh-huh. and help people laugh a little yeah. bit before we jump into it. into it. Let me tell you something. I live in Madison, Wisconsin, and so. We have a mm-hmm. regional airport. We have very few direct flights anywhere. The furthest you can fly direct from, furthest west you can fly, I think, is to Denver, maybe Salt Lake City. But we just got mm-hmm. a direct flight that's starting, that's starting this summer to San Francisco. I might have to oh. I might have to catch a direct flight to come out to <laughs> Solely Vegan <laughs> and eat some <laughs> vegan soul food. I never, ever thought seriously about being uh, thinking that I could do vegan until I saw your show. And I got to tell you, I don't know. It wasn't just because it was late and I was hungry. That food looked uh-huh. good. So, so just just take me back just a little bit um, to Mary. You left the health field. You had an idea that you wanted to do something that you loved. You wanted to do something that could help you still support your children. And of all the things that you can do, opening a restaurant is one of the hardest businesses to run. Yeah. What made you think you could do that? You know what? I, I followed my heart. Mm. And so I had been in the medical field for some time. In fact, I've only had two careers. I was, you know, always pretty consistent. Sure. I've only had two careers. One was the medical field and then the other, you know, food. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I first, when I, when I left the medical field, just a few prerequisites away from nursing school, I actually had developed a great relationship with, you know, my peers at uh, Marin General Hospital. And so many opportunities right. were, were there and folks were waiting for me to, you know, complete uh, you know, nursing school. When mm-hmm. I decided to to sell, you know, my products at the farmers market, first of all, everybody thought okay. I was absolutely insane. <laughs> sure. Um, and uh, and and the restaurant was not the initial thought. What okay. my thought process was was that I have something to offer the world, and right. how can I begin to get it out there? I didn't know anything about the restaurant industry. I had never worked in a restaurant. Um, nor did I have I, you know, had ever worked in the food uh, industry at all, actually. Um, I believed in myself and I believed mm. in, you know, in my products and, and my creations. And I thought I had something to offer the world um, that they would absolutely love, you know, and, and, and embrace. And, and you were right. And that you? has come to pass. Yes, yes. So, so you started off at the farmer's market. I also, I did a little research on you. You were doing catering just to help you bring money in in order to, to launch your business. And so how old were you yes. when you knew you could, when you could just throw down? I mean, like, when, uh, who told you? Like, and, and how old were you when you realized you could really cook? You know what? I was probably about, I'd say maybe about 20. All right. Um, I had, yeah, so I had my son at, at 19, but I was pregnant with him when I was 18, and I really, that's when I really started, you know, getting in the kitchen and cooking. I had turned vegan when I was about 17, vegetarian when I was 16. Mm. And so, um, you know, I grew up watching my mother cook, which ironically, most of her dishes were actually, you know, vegetarian, except for the actual meat products on Thanksgiving, you know, the turkey, really? and, you know, Christmas and all of that, but... Uh, so she actually, you know, fed us a pretty healthy diet, you know, growing up, you know, treats and snacks with yogurt and granola, apples and raisins <laughs> and things like that. That is fantastic. Um, yeah, it, it, it really is fantastic. And uh, but I grew up watching her cook. And I mean, she would lay out this, these buffets of food that were just incredible. Wow. And I mean, every single thing on the buffet was absolutely delicious. She truly put her heart and her soul and her energy and all of the dishes to make everything absolutely perfect. That sounds and, uh, fantastic. That's what I I'm do. I'm hungry. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Now, now this might be just a Midwest <laughs> thing, but when older people could cook, we would say that they could really put their foot in it. Do they say that in the, in the Bay Area? Do they talk about? Oh, oh, absolutely. So, so your mama, your mama, your mama used to put a foot in that buffet? Man. <laughs> so wait, she so no, she, she would buffet. put a foot yeah. in that buffet, she, and that would be yeah. the only meat. Her foot would be the only meat up in that buffet. Um, <laughs> so, so did she? Now, did she cook just because she wanted to prevent illness? Was she addressing illness, or was it an economic thing? Like, like what? What? Because I, I don't hear about a lot of African American cooks who just yeah. decide to go vegetarian and and vegan. So, what do you think? What do you think prom, um, um, prompted that for your mom? You know, when I asked her about that, because later on, when I was as I was feeding my son some vegan yogurt mm-hmm. uh, and granola, literally up until that point, I thought it was all me that this health, this whole health mm-hmm. thing came from me, and I was the one who originated that in my life. And then I had I had this epiphany that oh my god, my mother 
fed us the same snacks. Mm -hmm. So when I asked her later, I said, Mom, well, what made you do that? You know, what made you, you know, um, you know, feed us like that? And because we always used to be jealous of our cousins who, you know, have McDonald's every day. My mother, we didn't, we didn't eat that. You know, we did have it sometimes. Sure. Don't get me wrong, but primarily, you know, she she definitely did not feed us that. And she said her answer to that was, "Well, I just tried to do my best with you all." You know, so she just tried wow. whatever. So I guess she was a bit intuitive or. You know, however, however that works, but she did what her spirit told her to do, and and that was that's to, amazing. You know, eat us healthy, absolutely. You know, I, I grew up in the in the seventies. I'm I'm fifty four, so I grew up in the seventies, and my mom was a, was a student, but she'd work at night. But I remember her buying mm-hmm. whole wheat bread, feeding us salad. This is when you used to have to yes. put the the seasonings in a in a little vial. I think they called it. Put the oil and water and shake it. Um, she was giving mm-hmm. us 2% milk, but my other friends, particularly my African-American mm-hmm. friends, weren't eating brown bread, weren't drinking 2% milk, and weren't doing salad. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I think I agree with you. I think our moms were listening and, and realizing that although our food mm-hmm. and cuisine was very good and very tasty, in order to promote the health of their children, they had to do mm-hmm. something that was different. And we sort of fought it. But to this day, I still you know, buy and serve those staples to, you know, we serve it to my daughter, but I didn't know what my mom was doing, giving us brown bread and 2% milk back in the early seventies, yeah. but she, you know, but she was ahead yeah. of her time. It sounds like, like your mother was too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's, absolutely. And I mean, when I tell you that peas were my thing, green really? peas, I, I couldn't stand green peas. And so my mother would sit at that table. I'd fall asleep at that table. I would not <laughs> Ooh, eat those green peas. Old school, Ooh, old school. Green peas. Yeah. Oh my but, goodness. Uh, yeah, but lots of lots of vegetables, squash, and things like that, you know. That is, man, that is so great. Hey, folks, you're listening to Black Like Me with Dr. Alex G. I have a special guest on today, Miss Tamara Dyson from Oakland, California. She is the, the chief chef and the founder and the owner of Soli Vegan. And um, I first discovered her when I was watching Triple D. So tell me a little bit about how did, how did Guy and the folks from Triple D, you know, catch you? I mean, does the show write you? Does he write you? I know he doesn't just show up one day and you don't know he's coming. But uh, like, how far have no. I noticed, you know, how far have I noticed did they give you? And what did it feel like understanding that Guy and Triple D had gotten wind of your business? Yeah, so, so they do. It's a whole process. So what happened was that actually Guy's assistant, um, had eaten at my restaurant oh, and loved it and okay. actually frequented there. Um, and so she suggested me. She mm. suggested Solely Vegan for the show. So they called us. They did, you know, the interview process and, and all of that. And then they'll let you know, you know, if you had, you know, been picked. So they let you know probably about maybe three, maybe about three weeks in advance. That's uh, all? They let you know. Yeah, something, something like okay. that. They let you know that you've been picked. And, um, if I remember correctly and, um, and then, you know, they let you know what, cause they go over a slew of recipes with you and guy picks the one that are the, you know, the three dishes that he would like to see you, you know, recreate. And, uh, so they let you know what those are going to be. It's about, um, a three day process actually really, really? <laughs> shooting, shooting, yeah, <laughs> shooting that segment. It's, it's, it's pretty incredible. His team was absolutely amazing. He was a phenomenal guy. Actually. I really had such a great time. Actually, my favorite part was, uh, when they called me at 12 midnight and said, Hey, Tamara, we're actually, we're not going to be there at eight o'clock in the morning. We're actually going to be there at four. <laughs> What? In the morning. Four, oh, <laughs> no. Like, okay, no problem. <laughs> oh, man, we got this. We got this. Man. Yeah, that and, was the last day. But I have a lot. Of, luckily, I have a lot of energy. And, uh, you know, I was really excited. So I'm always just, you know, I'm, I'm shooting for my absolute sure. best. She looks to say I slept with one eye open. Oh, I really didn't let myself sleep because I didn't want to oversleep. But it was just a, it was a great experience. Phenomenal team. And I had a great time with them. Truly. It seemed truly. like it. I, I got to tell you, that tofu uh, po' boy sandwich got to uh-huh. me first of all just tell me what what is tofu so tofu is, is made soy? from soybeans it's made from soybean mm-hmm. yeah okay and i gotta get beyond that jiggly part so is it supposed to jiggle like that <laughs> yeah, I just let got... me tell you something you have different consistency with, with different uh consistencies with tofu so you can get <laughs> okay. the firmer uh tofu or you can get the silken tofu or the you know the standard tofu that's kind of you know midway or you know in between those both um 
but but actually for the po' boy, we're using uh, whole wheat protein, not tofu for that one. Oh, that was whole wheat protein. Okay, that's why it looked. Yeah. It all right looks so good. So so I mean so uh-huh. so you deep fry tofu. Yes, yes. And you use now you didn't use Crisco now. I know you I know you can you, you use Crisco for that. So what you use a sunflower oil or or sort of a, a peanut oil or what what did you fry that in? Yeah, we definitely stay away from the nuts, but we um okay, okay. we use canola oil or grapeseed oil. Oh, yeah. Oh, got you, got you. And um is is there is there a vegan version of chitlins? <laughs> you know what? Now see, now see, I've never been asked that question, but I'll tell you what. First thing that comes to mind is something that I used to make just for my staff to snack on, and it's called tofu skin. What's well, actually called uh, yuba? And, really? And it's tofu skins, and it's cut really, really thin. And you can cut those up and season those up, and you can, you can make those up. Wait, wait, yeah. wait. They and they don't stink. And they don't stink either. <laughs> they don't stink. You don't, you don't have to put them in that big bucket overnight or the, you know, just chase your kid. <laughs> You know, when I, when, I kept, when I was watching that show, I was thinking two things. Ooh. I'm going to find uh-huh. her. Um, I'm gonna find her on on the on uh, on Guy's website, and two, when uh-huh. I find her, I'm gonna ask her about vegan chitlins. I'm gonna ask her vegan <laughs> chitlins. Uh, hey, tell me, you know, tell me a little bit about um, what you're finding the health benefits to be. Because as I as I did research on you, um, just working with yeah. so many um, patients with gastro issues, you know, all of that started mm-hmm. you to think about your background and how you cooked. Um, when people say. Um, could you, could, I think your body can adjust and your, your palate can adjust to different kinds of foods, but there's, there's a, there's definitely, um, a health benefit. And what would you say are some of the top health benefits that you've experienced or people you serve are experiencing by, by being vegan? Cause you know, I, you know, we have, we have African-American, we have people listening from like 10 different countries, but a lot of African-American Absolutely. folks, what's, 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 what's the plug right now for, for our folks to think about mm-hmm. vegan and, and the health benefits? What, what would you say would be the top, um, I w- I think I will say this. I was never, you know, you know, as I said, I was never a big meat eater. I've actually never had a steak. So a lot of the, you know, oh traditional uh, meats um, that, you know, folks are accustomed to, I have actually, you know, never experienced. Sure, sure. But I will say, but I will say this, that when you are at, just picture being the best version of yourself. Mm. And with wow. that, you know, uh, fasting, like I'm, I'm fasting right now, fasting, keeping your body uh, clean. Most of the diseases start in the colon. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, meat is not how, you know, it used to be. It's been, it, it's completely different. And a lot of it is just chemicalized and, you know, right, genetically right. modified. And it's, I don't even if, you know if you can actually even call it meat anymore. Wow. But, just picture being the best version of yourself, and you have to treat your body and your soul and your mind. All of these things are connected. And in order to think at your very best, I believe, and I know that I'm at my optimum when, um, you know, when I'm fasting regularly um, and just, you know, treating my body right, because even though, you know, you can be a vegan, but you can still be, you know, unhealthy if you're, if mm-hmm. you're, you know, it's, it's the, it's, are you eating late? Are you eating, you know, big meals at 12 midnight and then going to sleep, you know, five minutes later? That's not um, a healthy lifestyle either. Um, but I would say that, you know, when your body uh, is, is light and what I find from a lot of, you know, guests who come into the restaurant who are meat eaters, or who we have helped to convert over to veganism, they say they just they just feel better That's when they, it's easier to get up in the morning uh, after they have had our meals. And it's southern it's still it's southern food, so you know you get healthy servings and all that. But they said they just feel good. And this one particular uh, gentleman who had uh, he moved to the mountains, so he was literally just mostly off of berries and things like that. And he mm-hmm. says that he says Tamara. He says, I, when I come down and I eat your food, I just feel good. I just feel, you know, I feel good. My body feels good because once your body is clean or as you're, you know, transitioning over, your body will let you know uh, if what you're eating is conducive to, you know, a healthy, sure, you know, a healthy sure. way of life or a healthy, you know, way of being. Your body will let you know. But in order for you to be in tune with your body, you have to give it a chance to cleanse. Wow. You know, so that you're you're able to listen. If that makes sense, I no, don't know. No, no, it makes it makes it makes great sense. So you're fasting okay. today. Does that mean you're drinking green teas or you're just doing water or 
I'm only eating, but you know, so, so as you, as you, as you're fasting currently, what, what does that look like? Yeah. So, uh, when I fast, I'll fast usually for about four days, four to five days. And I'll tell you that the first day is always, you know, kind of the, the roughest and because I'm hungry, yes, <laughs> I'm yes. looking at my food, especially at my food, I'm like, I don't want to <laughs> lentils or something. You work around you know? food but, fasting. Yeah. And I work around food, but, but, but I understand, um, you know, what I need to do for myself and cause sure, I have a lot sure. on my plate. So in order to handle everything, you have to be, you know, healthy and energized, et cetera. And I do have a lot of energy, but I find that fasting is, is, is a huge part of, of a healthy lifestyle. But when I fast, and yes, I, I will do like uh, green teas and and uh, and things like that. But it's mostly really water, water with uh, lemons and and berries, you know, antioxidants and things like that sure, in sure. it. And I'll just just drink tons of that. And by the first day is the hardest. The second day is a lot easier. And then by the third day, it's like I almost never want to want to eat again. I feel so great. And you would think that you would have, you know. Um, a, a lack of energy, but I actually have the most energy when I'm fasting. That's um, it's, a, it's a spiritual thing. You it know, is. My grandmother thing. talked. My grandmother talked about fasting a lot. That was a big spiritual mm. tradition. Wow. You know, I, mm-hmm. I, I'm noticing that that um, your your restaurant's drawing folks. I, I saw on your site Kevin on stage. I love Kev on stage. Mm. So I think that <laughs> I think that man is so funny. So he was there, and then also Eagle Dollar from um, um from the yeah. Warriors was there. He was just there this week, wasn't he? Was that yeah, early yeah. This well, Eagle Dollar. No, he was there. This was a few weeks ago that Eagle Dollar was there. But I will say that Jadell McGee, also from the Warriors, they, him and his wife and 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 they came down on Easter, Easter Sunday, and they had they had brunch with us on Easter Sunday. Um, we yeah, we get a we get a lot of folks. I'll tell you that the whole journey has been um, very spiritual. When people talk about business, right? You know, um, I, I when I talk about my you know business. Um, I can say more than anything else, it has been about self-development and deconnecting to mm-hmm. the best version of myself. And with that, I can grow anything and I can do anything. But um, I never thought about it as just, you know, business. It's always been about, you know, working, getting better, getting better. Sure. And no matter how far we come, I'm always thinking about the next step. How can we be better? What can we do better? And make others um, better. You're making others better, better too. Yes. How can we serve? How can we serve? Wow. That's so. So. Yes. So. When you think about your dreams, and that might be Tamara, that might be why many people fail in their dreams because they just think about how it benefits them. So you're saying even mm-hmm. when you reach a new peak, you're also you're always thinking about personal development, spiritual development. I mean, I'm sure you get ideas yes. while you're fasting because I've noticed that um, when I'm eating in a more healthy manner. I seem to be more in tune mm-hmm. spiritually. So the ideas come and they flow better. Yeah. And um, so mm-hmm. so you're making it really a ripple effect that it's not for you. Success is something that you get to do. You get to go to another summit because in helping yourself, mm-hmm. growing and developing, you're also finding greater ways to serve. And I think that's a great way to 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 define Absolutely. the motivation of um of success. Uh-huh. You know, I got a question when people think of um, like for me, I, I think I've only heard the the word or the term vegan maybe two or three years ago. And so I think for uh-huh. folks who are novices, um, they're not they're, they're not sure how that differs from being vegetarian. So vegetarians um, um, just avoid meat. Some may eat fish, but, you know, it's it's it's, it's well, we I think people know what vegetarians are. But how is a vegan different from a vegetarian for people who are listening to my show and don't know the difference? Yes, definitely. So vegetarians do not eat meat. However, they do consume dairy products, and and a lot of them consume eggs as well, Mm -hmm. in which I never understood that. You don't eat meat, but you eat eggs. I never understood that. But (laughs) but anyway. um, Oh, I could explain it to you. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry to me to cut you. Please go ahead. But vegans. But uh, no, so vegan vegans do not consume any animal products whatsoever. So anything that has dairy in it, um, wow. honey, even nothing that comes from, you know, any animal or insect or anything that has sure. eyes, basically, uh, vegans do not consume. So it's completely, okay. you know, plant-based. Yeah. Okay. Diet. So when people talk about plant-based diets. That, that's another word for vegan. Mm-hmm. Cause I hear people talk about, yes, yes. I hear people talk about, um, plant, plant-based. So that's, that's helpful mm-hmm. for folks. And so, um, so not only, staying away from from meat products but any byproduct or anything that comes from anything as you say with eyes so 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 bees Mm -hmm. make honey bees have eyes and so so vegans Mm -hmm. so so what do you do instead of um 
um, a, 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 a honey is there a, a guava or something? Am I pronouncing that right? A guava, a guave. Um, what, what do yeah. you use? What do you use um, instead of honey for folks who might want to sweeten their teas or, you know, mm-hmm. what's the, what's the vegan version of honey? Or yeah, for sure. Well, ma- maple syrup is always nice. Oh, uh, okay, okay. You know, um, agave is also you know a sweetener. Um, they have these you know. Uh, stevia, I think it is. I was, oh, sure, and sure. I still have to study up on those things. I was never, you know, too into those. I don't know how those are, are processed or put together. But but natural sweeteners are definitely, you know, you can always go to maple syrup, you know, a little bit of maple syrup or, or some agave or something sure, like that. Definitely. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Got you. So if I, if, if talking to you has got me hungry, so if I were in Oakland right now, and um, you're, you're opening for for breakfast. What are, what are some of the things I might be eating at Soli Vegan today for for breakfast? What are some of my options today? Oh yeah, definitely. So we have something called the Southern Fried uh, Tofu Bowl, and what that is, you have grits on the bottom, a piece of battered Southern Fried Tofu on top of the grits, and mm. then on top of that, uh, you have the okra gumbo. It's just absolutely delicious. I was actually in the kitchen wow. one day, and I decided to put the grits. I decided to put the gumbo on the grits, and I said, oh, this is amazing. You know, I have to put it on the menu, <laughs> those two combinations together. But we also have a version of of chicken and waffles, if you will. And really? we use our, yeah, the seton that you've seen on Triple D oh, for the po' boy. Sure. We do that in different different versions, and we make that in-house, by the way. Now, seton is, the whole, is protein of whole wheat. And, you know, my customers were asking, you know, for that. I had never cooked with that. Mm-hmm. You know, I, my, my cooking was, you know, I, I liked the approach of, you know, kind of how I call it, the food that people can understand. Right. And everybody understands potato salad. You understand yam. Yes, you understand black eyed peas, green. Mm-hmm. So you understand these things. And, and this was our approach. I don't need to give you. Uh, you know, vegan pork and all those right. things. I don't, I don't consume those things myself. Okay. So, and again, how I was raised, my mother certainly didn't give us that. She just gave us real food. So I'm into real food. But I'd also like to say that this, because this is very important to me, that, you know, not only paying attention to what you consume, but also pay attention to who is feeding you. And right. I, for instance, when I eat out, I, I'll, I'll tend to go to maybe an Ethiopian, you know, restaurant mm-hmm. or, you know, an African restaurant or, or just places that I feel like the, the, the people care, um, right. you know, that's it, important. Because it's a historic, historically speaking, it's about the love that you put into your food. That's right. killing. Right. My son would never get sick. You know, he never, he never, he never, ever, ever got sick. I, I rarely get sick either, but, but he never, mm-hmm. he never got sick. It's the love that, that I, it's the energy that goes into the food that's healing. That's and, powerful. and I think that we need to get back to that. Def- definitely, definitely. I th- and I think I love the fact that you have redeemed the soul food part of it because I think it was it was comfort for us. And a lot of these meals came, you know, I, I mean, I'm a history buff, you know, about giving mm-hmm. the bad parts of meat. And we had to cook, you know, the, the, the mess out of it just so that it could be palatable. So we would cook it and smoke it and fry it and put mm-hmm. sauce on it. Um, but still, even with the little. Our parents and grandparents knew how to take flour and water, make gravy, and make stuff taste That's really right. good. But you're still mm-hmm. taking that love. You're just making sure we don't die eating it. And I, I like that redemptive nature of what you're doing. You understand that we still need that love and we want that flavor. But you figured a way to do that so that it so that we can still live long enough to enjoy life. And I think that's I think that's powerful. I, I appreciate well, that. I- if I, if I could just say something, sure. um, you know, so so myself and my father, we didn't we didn't have the greatest relationship. But without going into that, mm-hmm. my mother, my mother, we just I'll just say that you know we came from very very extremely humble beginnings. Sure. And there were times when she could not. I have a brother and a sister, so she had three children. Mm-hmm. And there were times when she literally could not feed us. And and this sounds corny, but I'm telling you the absolute truth. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mother loved us so much that I remember having no food, but I never remember being hungry. 
Right. When right. I, you know, I remember at one time specifically, because if my mother wasn't in the kitchen making something out of flour and, you know, something, right, right. And that means we didn't have nothing. You know, if she's sure. not in there making some bubbling brown sugar or something like that. That means that we didn't have anything in the cupboard, you know, because they go in there, they make something out of nothing. Yes, they did. You know, when yes, you don't have did. any food. And so I remember, you know, one particular time myself, my brother, you know, and my sister were laying with my mother on her bed. And we didn't have any food, but I just, I, 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 I she gave us so much love mm-hmm. that it almost filled my belly. I come from love. Right. I come from love. And, and, and my memories are, are of that. You know, like I said, I had, you know, a lot of experiences with my father, but my mother's love superseded anything. And, and I come from love and which is why I believe that I give. And my grandfather, you know, I learned from these people, you know, watching yes. them and just watching the love that he gave to his family. My grandfather took care of everybody, and I admired him for that. I wanted to be like that. Sure. And you're you like know? that. You're, you're, you're doing it. And you're I'm like that. that. Yeah, yeah. What are we, yeah. How are we going to get your food? First of all, I got to tell you, I love that. I, it's You just painted such a beautiful picture of soul food. And if people are wondering why food is so important, to really to to every ethnic group we 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 have those special meals but you explained what it is about it it's the love and particularly with soul food it mm-hmm. takes time there's there's no such thing as fast yeah. food um mm-hmm. soul food mm-hmm. um so how are we going to spread that love throughout the country what, what's it going to take to get um some of your meals out here are there plans to 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 i don't know to, to open up other restaurants is there a way to ship mm-hmm. it to folks um, I know we can find other vegan restaurants, but I don't think they're going to do soul food. So are you at liberty to just to talk mm-hmm. about what you'd love to see happen in the next five to 10 years in terms of getting to sh- off- giving you the ability to share that love with uh, with other mm-hmm. parts of the country? Yeah, I have every intention of making Solely Vegan an international brand. And we mm. have actually begun, um, you know, the expansion process. My cousin is opening up a location in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, and that will be wow. opening within the next the next six months, and then we'll That's be excellent. you know. Excellent. I can offering. drive there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And so, so we are expanding. Uh, we are, you know, uh, we have begun the the franchise, you know, process. So if anybody wants to know about that, they can you know visit the website uh, in a few weeks, and it'll have more detailed information about you know about that. I'm also in the process of uh, you know writing writing a book. Um, Because like I said, this journey has been more so about, it's just the connection. It's the connection. And I had this, I had a a guest of mine, longtime customer of mine, and he says, he says, he he comes in one day, he he says, because he was talking about writing a book for a long time, a a children's book. And he says, Tamara, you know, I finally wrote my book. He said, I wrote that book literally because of the conversation that we had. Wow. And so many people have told me that I was, you know, inspirational. And, and, and for me, that just, it chokes me up because you have to share. You have to share what you've learned. You have to share your experiences. And that's more valuable than anything. You have to let people know that they can do it too. You know, we're yes. no different. You yes. know, you can do whatever you want to do. Follow your heart. And you can do it. It sounds cliche and corny, but I swear to God, it's the truth. And I only know from what I've experienced. You know what? That's a great way to close this out. I can't add anything better um, yeah. than, than that. I really appreciate your being here. And, hey, I want to just put this plug out. One, um, I have colleagues and family in, in the Bay Area. So um, mm. and I don't get there often. But when I do, I'm going to give you a heads up because I want to come on a day when you're there. Please. But I want to come and eat vegan. And the other thing I would love to do from time to time. May I may I call you up and have you on the show as we're approaching certain holidays so that maybe you can give people some ideas of what they can do for vegan Fourth of July, uh, vegan Thanksgiving Day. Can can I can I call you from time to time to be one of my um, 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 on call um, uh, famous chefs who can talk to people about some healthier yes. things that they can do? I would absolutely love that. I really enjoy sharing. I would I would really enjoy that. Definitely. And 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 I'm going to have a yes. link on my website folks at alexg.com so that you can follow um Tamara's work. Um but also, if you're looking at expanding and I, and, and she didn't ask me to say this, but I'm going to have a link on my website to her because if you if you're listening to my show in some of these several countries, 
um, and you you have business acumen and you want to support a sister that's doing something great, come to AlexG.com. Click the link to go to Tamara Dyson's um, Facebook page or website. Talk to the sister yeah. because um, I'm sure she's open to some above board, some bona fide investors and help her take this to where she wants to go. We, we know you launched that business without capital, but if you're going to go international, you're going to need some capital. So anybody out here yeah. who's looking for some good, good business opportunities, get in touch with this sister and help that dream come to pass. And so you've been listening to Black Like Me with Dr. Alex G, my very special guest. And my new friend is Miss Tamara Dyson. She is the owner Beautiful. and the chief chef of Soli Vegan in Oakland, California, the award-winning Soli Vegan. It has been an honor to talk with you today. Thank you so much for being my guest. Thank you, Alex. Thank you so much for having me. I sure. really enjoyed it. Yes, I'll be in touch with you, believe me. Very um, good. All right, take care. <laughs> Hey, like we always say, we want you to listen, we want you to learn, and live better. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. You can find out more about Dr. Alex G's amazing work at www.alexg.com. Black Like Me is sponsored by the generosity of the Human Family Unity Foundation.